message to the billionaire class, you can't have it all. Hello everyone and welcome to the Evolution of Now. I am your host today, Michael, and with me I have Chris, my beautiful assistant. How are you doing, Chris? Hey, I'm an assistant. Do I get a, a little uh, uniform and everything with that? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll stick you in a nice um, bikini or something. Be great. Ooh, that's hot. <laughs> I like it. It's just, and later <laughs> on, we should be having John join us, but he's being very slow today. Sad. Yes, he, he's not parade winning. or something, doesn't he? Sad. Yeah, I don't know. There, there was a uh, a big, massive parade for the Eagles winning the Super Bowl today. They scheduled it for, and uh, this is this, we're talking on Thursday. By the way, uh, we usually record on Fridays, but yeah, today was a special occasion. Jordan isn't going to be with us tomorrow to uh, record, so we did this for him, and he's not even here anyway. So. Hey. He's, he's failing. He's low energy, he, low stamina. He doesn't so have the stamina. We're getting around bad by mocking him a little bit at the start of the show. Anyway, <laughs> sad. So what's been what's been going on in the news, Chris? Today, uh, anything interesting? Uh, well, we um, dive into it. There, there was a thing. Um, I know you want to talk about it. Uh, that happened recently. Um, there was a a big protest about the NHS, right? Yes, and in uh, the UK. And Donald Trump weighed in. He he put his little two cents in there, and mm. uh, yeah, people didn't like it. <laughs> Cause like yeah, so there was a big protest uh, because we like our NHS because we want the NHS properly funded. So there was a big protest in the UK, and Trump uh, tweeted and said, "This is why nationalized healthcare is useless." No, no, we're not protesting because we don't like the NHS. We're protesting because we do. You yeah. fucking idiots. And then it makes it even better. Jeremy Hunt, the health minister who's obsessed with selling the NHS, jumps in and says, with his bullshit opinion, starts going on about how, oh, no, we actually like the NHS. Well, stop fucking selling it then, you twat. Yeah. <laughs> but it's one of them. Donald Trump makes me take the side of the most vile people. Yeah. How I'm like, yes, what Jeremy Hunt said is great. I fucking hate him, but and, yeah, what he said is great. And you also have to uh, be, you know, there with uh, what's her name too. Oh, Theresa May. Theresa May. She's also on your in your camp now. Yeah, oh. yeah. I mean, when I'm on the same side as Theresa May, you done fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so that happened. Um, mm -hmm. He that was uh, a thing. Yeah, he was reprimanded for that by uh, by the uh, Twitterverse and the internet. As a whole. And everyone else. <laughs> you know, yeah. Go wave, Donald. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Um, there was also a, uh, a really interesting uh, clip that you uh, showed me and Jordan. I think it was this week that it happened, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, from the Jimmy Kimmel show. Ah, um, uh, yes, yes. And he's been doing some interesting stuff recently. I've not really paid attention to him at all because I haven't really cared. About about his career in in much uh, regard for a long time, um, but he is doing some really important stuff, and and um, he had this segment um, where he took a dreamer and uh, had this little panel of uh, people that were um, were against illegal immigration and uh, against uh, giving the dreamers anything, basically, and, and uh, in favor of deporting the dreamers, especially. And um, it, it was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> like, they had this, um, this panel of people, and they brought on a dreamer, a lady who, um, she was 28, 30, something like that. And she had a job and paid taxes, no criminal record. And a child. Had a kid, yeah. uh, a young child, and a husband who serves in the military. And they asked her, well, should she be deported? And most of them were like, yeah. What? Pretty much all of them. <laughs> except for, I guess, like there was one lady by the end towards that the end. actually you know, said she shouldn't be. Yeah, towards but the end, it. one of the ladies said um, there should be an exception. But like, I think there was like six or seven people in in the 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 mm. other group there though but like i said it was terrible the this this uh clip was extremely important i th i really appreciate jimmy kimmel for what he was doing 
what was terrible about it were those people. Like, mm. everything that any of them said was just so mind-numbingly stupid to me. Like, even, like, one lady, uh, the one lady that did actually uh, cross over at the end, uh, was saying, well, we're a very compassionate and caring nation, and um, and we're we're just such a good nation, basically. And uh, I I really applaud Jimmy Kimmel for uh, actually uh, being like, no, no, we're not. I don't think so. I think we're yeah, we're no, actually a cruel nation up. at this point. This and woman, she moved to this country. She was two, and they want to just deport her into Mexico somewhere. Like, um, yeah, that's not. I mean, that's not compassionate. That's not caring. That is cruel. That is exactly what it is. You're taking her away from her child, too, because the child's not getting deported. The child is an American citizen. Yeah, and even those child's... people in the panel were actually saying that, too. But well, um, the, uh, the husband was going to go deploy in the military. So what they'd be essentially doing is putting a child into care. A woman randomly in a country, she's, as far as she knows, she's never been there before. I don't remember what, what happened when I was two. So she's yeah. just dropping a random woman in a foreign country and leaving a kid in the U.S. in care while her husband serves in the fucking military. Yeah. I mean, none of them <laughs> cared except for the one lady that eventually sort of came over at the end. The rest of them were, were just awful, awful, awful. Yeah. But yeah, um, it was just, you know, sickening. Yeah, I don't want to go too far into that. Maybe we'll we'll talk more in depth on that in the future, though. We we definitely need to have a topic on on that. We do. Because this this whole uh, dreamer thing is getting out of hand. The the right wing is just so like foaming at the mouth like at this point. It's it's um, disturbing to the point where I don't think they think about humans and people. They're just a cult. Trump said it, so it's true, and that's it. Uh, I don't know how you how, how do you combat that? Yeah, it's it's tough. It's really really tough, but. Hopefully, with uh, with us here, you know, we can help uh, open conversations. Though, like that's one thing that I I hope that our show can help others to do is open conversations. You know, um, I, I don't know of any other way that we can really reach them other than opening conversations with them and trying to reason with them, try and get to reason because they are just so like anti reason. At this point, it seems like, but they they have to be able to reason at some point, and hopefully yeah. they can. Yeah, but, um, I hope so. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, our topic for today will be infrastructure, but first, um, there's something I wanted to get to because it's Black History Month today. We like in the last episode, we want to highlight a particular um, African American or African person in general who's contributed something to um, modern society. Now. The idea was we're going to find someone who's contributed something to our topic. So last time we did automation, and Jordan talks about. Um, oh, I talked about. Uh, oh yeah, you, you Catherine, you, Catherine Johnson. Catherine Johnson, yes. Mm -hmm. um, this time, this one's a bit more personal to me because, as people may know, I've had a kidney transplant. Um, the reason I'm alive today is because I've had a, a transplanted kidney. It turns out the guy who developed kidney transplantation surgery was an African-American named Samuel L. Kuntz. And um, Chris will put a link in the description of this. Yeah. Um, he developed um, kidney transplantation. He developed the um, – he did the first kidney transplantations. He, he was working at Stanford University Medical Center, performed the first successful kidney transplantation between humans who are not identical twins. So between – normal people um interesting he also developed the kidney perfusion machine which um, a lot of people don't know is how they get kidneys from place to place because of course you take a kidney out of a body it's gonna be dead within minutes you put it in this machine and this machine will keep the kidney alive for a few hours hmm. um up to 50 hours now so you can then transport it somewhere and give it to someone else with like a kidney transplant like that would the uh would the two people have to have the same blood type? I yeah, would yeah, they yeah. have to be compatible. I, I and obviously, that, yeah, but... since then we've improved the process. You don't have to be as compatible anymore. But um, to develop that is incredible. And of course, um, building on from that of all the other transplantation so surgeries, uh, liver transplants, heart transplants, lung transplants, all of this comes from this one. It's, it builds on this this technology of kidney transplants because kidneys were the first one. Wow. 
So he may well, you could may well say he revolutionized medicine. Um, this this mm. guy, and he's the reason I'm alive. So yeah, there's actually a show that I started watching a while back, but I never really got through it. Um, that was called The Nick, I think, and um, it was about like uh, some of the earlier times of um, of surgery and things. And I know one of the characters was an African American uh, character in it. Um, I, I can't remember much about it though. I only saw like the first few episodes and kind of never watched it again, <laughs> but it, it seemed like an interesting show. And I, I kind of wonder if that guy could have been this guy. I mean, it'd be interesting it's to know, but, but yeah, um, he was, he was an impressive character. Yeah. Um, I guess I'll have so to, yeah. uh, eventually look back into that show again at some point. I don't know. So anyway, uh, so our topic today is going to be about infrastructure. How start, what is infrastructure? Um, how is it, uh, infrastructure looking in the US and the UK and maybe some other places? Um, and the different types of infrastructure, how is that going? And then Trump's upcoming infrastructure bill, because, um, of course, that's why we picked this topic. Trump has an infrastructure bill coming up. Yay. 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 <laughs> so first off, what is infrastructure? basic definition it's the basic systems that keep a country going so roads electricity water gas internet um, rail airports ports all this stuff it's all infrastructure um so how is your infrastructure looking in the u.s chris well now that you uh mention it we're doing great over here with infrastructure it's it's really really great I'm mm -hmm. glad that you uh, have uh, brought this up, by the way. Um, it's it's so good that we have a report card. Uh, yeah. So Go on, that was over great. <laughs> overall, GPA, grade point average for uh, the uninitiated. 2017, uh, our infrastructure report card, D plus overall, which is just barely above failing. Which would be F, I guess. Um, yeah. Aviation. They, they, they actually uh, break this down into a bunch of different categories. Aviation uh, infrastructure, which is planes, uh, D. Bridges, C+. Plus. Well, we're, we're doing a little bit better on that one. Dams, C+. Plus. Oh, we're doing all right on that one. Drinking water, D. <laughs> um, energy, C+. Plus. Oh, there you go. Hazardous waste, D+. Plus. Inland waterways D minus, uh, levees D. If uh, if you guys remember Hurricane Katrina, one of the the biggest reasons why Hurricane Katrina was as destructive as it was was a a, a very important levee uh, broke during the uh, the hurricane, and it it flooded a large section of the South. Yeah, I want to talk about that a little bit more in detail a bit, but yeah, it's important, that one. Yeah. So, levies are at a D, which is even lower than the uh, the overall grade point average. Um, ports, C+. Public parks and recreation, D+. Rail, B. Roads, D. Schools, D+. Solid waste, C+. Transit, D-. And wastewater, D+. And yeah, that's that's where We're we stand basically currently. Basically, almost failing across the board. Yeah, pretty much, except for rail. Rail's doing okay, apparently, at a B. Oh, look at mm. that. Although I find that, I mean, mate, it probably is freight rail more than passenger rail. I don't know because getting from place to place, don't matter how fast you go, if you've got massive trains to do it. Yeah, I mean, our trains are pretty slow here. Like yeah. that was another thing. Um, that yeah, we but for freight trains, about. um, freight trains are never going to go up to two hundred miles per hour anyway. They're just yeah. too big. Yeah, that's um, true. you can get away with a slow train as long as you can have a massive long train, and which you can in America because it's mostly long and flat. Mm -hmm. Fuck yeah, <laughs> pretty much. But uh, yeah, well, that's in the UK. That's our great card. On, it was great. It's 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 big league. It's it's winning. It's winning so much that we're already <laughs> tired of winning. Go uh, on yeah. with uh, the UK. Uh, so the UK, we are at the moment trying to build high speed rail called the HS2. Um, high speed rail and the idea is to go from London which is the bottom of the country up to Manchester which is halfway up the country uh, and connect 
the north of the city is to the London. Um, yeah, it's not quite as far as like uh, Scotland, I don't think, right? Manchester. No, no, it's but, not even halfway. All right. Um, it's just connecting England together. It's not really connected to Scotland, which has, is one potential problem in itself. Yeah, it's no, sort of the idea like is on the northwestern-ish side of the country, closer <laughs> to Wales, I think. Close-ish. Yeah. yeah, yeah, a bit north of Wales. To give people a little bit more of a roadmap to find it. Shouldn't be too hard, I guess. Aye. So, they're going to move. They're going to. The idea is to make 30,000 new jobs or $20,000 in London, so they don't count. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I know. It's in joke, that one. Um, And to better connect the northern cities together. Uh, The idea is that expands the markets available to those northern cities. So, if you make something in a northern city, you can sell it further away. Because of course, if you can get further, you can you can sell further. Your 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 potential market is is much broader. Yeah, um, it's one of the reasons infrastructure is so important, and generally improve the economy of the country. Generally. The problem is, um, first of all, the environmental problems. The HS2 line going to go straight through some wildlife sites, because of course. Yeah, I mean, um, with a high-speed rail system, you probably want it to be as straight as possible. So there's, yeah, there's really not you know, much wiggle as as room possible. that you can have on that. It has to go in a certain uh, place for the most part, right? Mm-hmm. So that's one potential problem. The other one is that if you're not, if your city or town isn't on this high-speed rail line, you're a bit screwed, and you're going to lose loads of, um, I mean, loads of economic. Ec- loads of economy and um, probably for your job as well. I mean, technically, they've already been screwed because they haven't had it regardless, right? I don't know. Yeah, well, um, in particular areas like Wales and Yorkshire, which are historically poor anyway, they could really do with the investment. Um, yeah, but who cares about Wales? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Wales is on. the most deprived area in Europe, stuff. and Britain is one of the richest. So mm. that's kind of a shameful thing, I think. It's weird. It's like... Uh, yeah. There, there's places like that in America, like mm. yeah, it's the like mm. Kentucky of America, of the UK. Yeah, or certain towns in uh, I don't know, Texas, and uh, mm. what was that? The one place in uh, the with the uh, the major uh, water crisis that's been happening, Flint, Flint Michigan. Yes. <laughs> so you know, we, we do have our own pockets of uh, mm-hmm. devastating and then, poverty, uh, and fun. obviously the rail's going to be built through housing estates and things so people will probably end up losing the houses yeah yeah and obviously destruction but um so that's what we're doing above in the UK. Ground or like i'm mostly guessing it's above mostly ground. above ground yeah yeah some of it's below ground especially when it goes to the, through the towns i mean i guess technically you really can't like make it all underground because that's just way too far maybe i don't know to, it's too expensive yeah you can really build a tunnel to long. try and do that i guess yeah, yeah. all right Mm-hmm. So, uh, it, do Any you results? think that's going to happen? And is it like it's a happening. surefire thing? It is happening. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure it's a surefire thing. And the problems I can see is that it's going to concentrate wealth in the cities that are connected to it. Yeah. Whereas the cities that aren't connected to, it, or the towns that aren't connected, are going to get the wealth sucked out of them by these cities that are mm. interconnected. When you've got a very big economic block, which was what it would transform these cities into, just one big economic, you could consider them as one big economy thing. It's just going to um, grow those areas, I guess. Yeah, it's like and shrink more people the will move there, and yeah, I guess mm-hmm. that makes sense, yeah, unfortunately. So, yeah, that's a problem. I mean, that's going to be our problem regardless, I guess. You know, like, there's yeah. no matter what happens, that's always going to happen, unfortunately, with all this. it's It sucks. But, um, yeah. Yeah. So anything else, though, uh, regarding uh, infrastructure that's noteworthy in uh, in UK at this point? Or just this high-speed rail? It's just the high-speed rail. We, um, Boris, um, I forgot to mention, Boris wants to build a bridge to Europe as well. Uh, so the idea is to build a bridge from the UK to Europe. Uh, long as fuck. <laughs> um it's possible. It's just it just cost a crap load, um, yeah. and we've already got the, the channel tunnel, so I don't really see the point. 
I mean, you but, would need to have like uh, structures go all the way to the bottom of the ocean, I would assume, for mm-hmm. like a structural uh, integrity yeah, of it. Right? I, I assume you'd, you'd need pillars that go right down to yeah. the bottom of the channel. I don't know how deep it is, but... That seems it's like gotta it's going to be hard. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, can, I assume it's technically possible, but yeah, it would sure be it difficult. Is. And like how how often would those pillars be at, in danger of being uh, you know, well, eroded down? The other problem I can see is that it's a major shipping lane, the channel. Yeah. So you, your bridge is going to have to be quite high up as well over, over ships and things. And, yeah, and what happens if one of these ships just careens right into one of the pillars because it loses <sighs> power or something, you know? That could happen. Mm. But yeah, that's Doesn't seem idea. like a good idea. No. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, it would I be know. nice, I guess, in some ways, but there's also a lot of problems with it, I guess. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so infrastructure in general, the idea is to improve the infrastructure, so improve the economy, because people can sell to more people. This is why we're building a high-speed rail in the U.S., in the U.K. In the U.S., you're also talking about high-speed rail. Do you have any uh, examples there, Chris? Uh, well, we did have a, a story that I don't remember who posted this. It's on Forbes. Um, there might be some uh, that are – we do have a few, I think, is, is what it is. Um, yeah, you do. Uh, there's this graph from this one article from Forbes. Uh, the the article is, uh, why doesn't the United States have high speed bullet trains like Europe and Asia? Um, down into it, it uh, has total numbers of uh, of high speed rails, and we have it looks like 28. But um, I do know I, I read something uh, recently that um, they're they're looking into potentially uh building uh, a high speed rail between uh Houston and Dallas in Texas um kind of could be a, a situation like uh you're worried about there in uh mm. in the UK where it will concentrate more economic power into Houston and Dallas and between there if there are stops and everything so it could be worrying for areas right around it's a smaller there. towns nearby yeah. yeah so that was one of the plans i think they've been trying to There's one in california i believe as well yeah I, I was gonna mention that one i think it, it's a i think it's supposed to be between a san francisco area and like los angeles they want to make a, a high-speed rail there too yeah the thing that confuses me is in america um in the uk we're quite we're quite a small country london to um and but now is only about six hours to yeah. go from top end of the country to the bottom. Um, why? Um, the, yeah, we're trying to build high speed rail in the US. It can take you days to travel across the country. Yeah, you get more out of a high speed rail. Yeah. So your reluctance to build like a national high speed rail grid is is kind of stunning to me, especially when your your trains right now are actually slower than most countries. I, mean, I have a very strong feeling. A large part of why that's the case is capitalism. You know, like we here in America, we have privatized all of those industries. We don't have a that I know of, at least. So I don't I don't believe any of our rails are nationalized in any way or owned by any of the states or anything like that. They're owned by private corporations. And these companies have a profit motive and. While it might sound like it could be um, more profitable for them to have a high-speed rail across the country, there's also a very large amount of money that they would front right up at, off the bat. And also, you know, there's no guarantee that it's going to uh, be able to pay itself off. And so a corporation or a company might be more reluctant to uh, invest in something like that and we already have the pipelines that we already do have, or, or I guess the rail lines that we already have. So I, I don't know and if like uh, there's regulations in place where there's not, or maybe it's just not easy to make completely brand new rails anymore anywhere because there's just very little place or space for it. Maybe I don't know. I assume it's possible. The um, I assume a part of it at least is that the oppositional nature of the Republicans, because they're never going to op- 
approve a big spending thing like this. Yeah. And the um, every time the Democrats try it, they're going to block it because yeah. they're Republicans. That's what they do. So I mean, that's the thing. Like these corporations that own these the rails and the uh, the the train companies are not going to foot the bill themselves. They're going to look for the government to actually fund it for them. Uh-huh. And if the the government itself is reluctant to fund it too. It's not going to happen then, you know, and this is the difference between capitalism and uh, and largely socialism in a lot of ways. Social you know, democracy. social, yeah, social democracy typically does more things for the greater uh, good of its people, whereas capitalism does what's best for capital and for profit. Yeah. For profit. Yeah, exactly. That's what that is, you know, and. When you have profit motives, these things get derailed. <laughs> no pun intended. You know, and it's the same <laughs> thing with universal health care. It's the same thing with universalized, uh, you know, education. There's a profit motive against us going to universalized uh, health care. There is a profit motive going against us going to a universalized uh, um, university and college situation. So they're opposed to it and this is why also we're seeing the erosion of even our public schools for uh high school and uh middle school and all of that right now with the the waiver programs to go to private in uh schools and everything you know they want more capture of these things that we find to be uh goods for society a social good for the uh society and they're trying to privatize it so they they put a yeah. I've had many conversations with um, Republicans who ask. Um, I, I say we should need more schools, and say they'll say, "Well, how are you going to pay for it?" And you're like, "Well, how can you not pay for it? <laughs> it's, it's education. Of course, you're going to pay for it." Yeah. Um, where where do you get the profit from in, in a school? Why are you thinking about profit in terms of school? You don't need to think about profit in a school. You think about education outcomes. Yeah. The education is the profit. You know that's that profits yeah. everything. All the way down the line, it, it uh, benefits society. We've talked about this before in, in one of our uh, recent episodes. You know, it, it when people are more educated, there's less crime. When people are more educated, they uh, are more uh, active with their government, potentially. They uh, are more... Uh, They're also healthier. That's weirdly. That too. <laughs> um, they're more gainfully employed and able to... Uh, be more flexible with their jobs when the job market that's coming up re- like soon with the automation and everything happens when you're uneducated you're going to be much much more at a disadvantage when uh, automation starts kicking into gear and and throwing millions of people out of work you know you're not going to be able to change to another career as easily with without an education you know these things all work in tandem to each other. And the only way I like that you can be against, uh, you know, education and spending on education and everything is if you just don't give a damn about people and you would rather them starve to death in the streets than your taxes go up even just a hair. And I just find that kind of thought process to be very, very disgusting and very obviously self-serving, <laughs> you know. So, and a large part of the problem with this is is often the same way. Um, Bernie Sanders wrote a great article in Medium, which will be in the description. Oh, so good. Um, yeah, talking about how um, public-private partnerships, uh, which is where you get essentially the government builds something and they sell it off to private companies who well, I, I allow think we it should... to. I think we should start off with, uh, like, when we're we're going to be going into the uh, the whole uh, infrastructure spending now uh, here in the states. I wanted That's to start true. off with the this uh, little clip that I have from Donald Trump talking about infrastructure, and I believe yes, good idea. I believe this was from the uh, the State of the Union that happened the other week, and uh, so let's play that. And um, here we go. Crumbling infrastructure will be replaced with new roads, bridges, tunnels, airports, and railways gleaming across our very, very beautiful land. Another Republican president, Dwight D. Eisenhower, initiated the last truly great national infrastructure program, the building of the interstate highway system. 
The time has come for a new program of national rebuilding. America has spent approximately $6 trillion in the Middle East. All the while, our infrastructure at home is crumbling. With the $6 trillion, we could have rebuilt our country twice, and maybe even three times if we had people who had the ability to negotiate. To launch our national rebuilding, I will be asking Congress to approve legislation that produces a $1 trillion investment in infrastructure of the United States, financed through both public and private capital, creating millions of new jobs. This effort will be guided by two core principles, buy American and hire American. So that's uh, Donald Trump mm-hmm. on, uh, you know, he, he does mention the public-private uh, partnership, which I, I definitely want to get into soon. But he, Yeah, no, it's a good idea to do that first. He says a very interesting thing there, though. And, and in some ways, he's actually 100% correct on it. And, and that's the shocking part here. We spent over $6 trillion on wars in the Middle East that we didn't have to wage in the first place. That is very, very real. That is very true. It's that true. did happen. And it's true. Weirdly, it jumps as much of a warmonger as anyone, but yeah, it's true. Let's, let's just, let's just look past that right now though. But um, yeah, like he's talking, that's right. You know, we could have spent all of that money that we just poured into Iraq and, he, and Afghanistan for these ridiculously horrendous wars that were started um and we could have used that for infrastructure we could have used that to uh spend on our education system we could have used it for a plethora of other things and we would have been better off now than we are but we didn't and it's because of his party it was the it was the republicans that pushed us into those wars so i mean mm-hmm. it, it's funny how how they love to like say like yeah oh we have all these problems oh how how could we have spent six trillion dollars on this crap why did we do this you made us do it because you started the wars stop hitting yourself stop hitting yourself <laughs> stop hitting yourself <laughs> is, hey wait, Jordan is that a hey, Jordan right here I hey Jordan. Jordan how's it going yes. man we weren't mocking you before. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> Just like how you're not mocking me right now. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, it's it's good to hear you, Jordan. Uh, you're only what, like an hour late? I don't know. Well, come on, that's a little bit more than that stuff. Okay, a little bit more than that. Stuff, okay? <laughs> <laughs> a, little more than that. <laughs> a little bit more than that, really. That's insider baseball. Okay? They don't need to know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that just sounds like uh, you trying to uh, defer the uh, the debate here. But anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah did you did well, you catch the oh, yeah. uh, the clip from? Uh, from Trump there that we played? Yeah, I did. And uh and that was that was during the period where Trump was pretending to be a populist, right? That was um, I think uh the the recent uh speech that he made, the uh the president what the hell? Why do I keep on forgetting it? Is it the State of the Union address? The State of the Union. Yeah. Oh, okay. So he kind of I think that's he, what it's from, yeah. Mm-hmm. I see, I see. So he kind of um he flows in and out whenever it suits him. Basically. But yeah. um But yeah, it, what so the, the thing with that is it, it, it's infrastructure seems to be the only um, the only topic within his platform that Democrats um, were very adamant about working with him on uh, during the even during the general up yeah. until the very moment he was uh, he was inaugurated. It was the one thing even Bernie, he said, look, I don't necessarily agree with I don't agree with nothing you have to say, anything you have to say. But the one thing that is empirical and that I 100% agree on with you is infrastructure spending or spending uh, on infrastructure. And, Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, we're a year, a year in and uh, he hasn't, you know, uh, he hasn't lived up to any of those promises that he made the, you know, the populist, um, uh, you know, um, 
you know, posturing that he was doing during, you know, when he was mm-hmm. trying to call people into, you know, into voting for him. So imagine that Republicans not actually uh, living up to their promises. Mm. Mm. It's weird. I love my my first thoughts on hearing this um, were Trump wants to spend a massive amount of money on infrastructure. It's a good thing we didn't cut taxes recently, isn't it? <laughs> the first <laughs> right. thing I do when I'm thinking about spending a load of money is cut taxes. Mm. Mm. No, mm-hmm. no, <laughs> that's really stupid. So he suddenly wants to produce one trillion dollars of tax of um, money for this infrastructure project, and he wants to get the money from somewhere. Um, you've just cut everything. You've cut taxes. You've right. cut everything to the bone. I mean, yeah. what's so I, ironic too is that that's almost precisely how much he cut those taxes for the for corporate in uh, in for the rich. Yeah. It was yeah, one point five trillion actually. So mm. very close. But yeah, if he needed to know where to get it from, well, he already had it. But he lost it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for Christ. <laughs> well, yeah, he yeah. did mention the public-private partnerships, um, which is where you um, you sell public infrastructure to private companies who then are supposed to maintain it. And, um, or at least sort of like rent it out for an yeah, extended yeah. period of time. You allow private companies to toll the road, essentially, and collect toll fees. Um, yeah. So that they'll repair it and expand it and things like this. Yeah, and I actually um, have some... Uh, examples of that if whenever you want to get yes, into that. Yes, I was just about to say to you, um, there are some examples of public-private partnerships that have gone awry in this article by Bernie Sanders. Um, if you want to go for it, Chris, go for it. Oh, yeah. The the first few here are definitely interesting to hear about. Um, the, the article here from the Medium is great. It's written, I believe, by Bernie Sanders himself. Um, it's called Rebuilding Our Infrastructure, Why Trump's Public-Private Partnership Model is Good for Wall Street but Bad for America. And uh, I definitely encourage all of you out there to read this piece. It's it's really, really interesting and, and good. Um, but at the end of the article, he has a top 10 failed public-private partnerships. Uh, the first one here is Chicago Parking Meters is the uh, the, ta- the name of it. In 2008, the city of Chicago sold the right to manage the city's parking meters for 75 years to Morgan Stanley and its financial partners for $1.15 billion. I mean, that seems like a lot of money, right? But um, let's let's go on into this a little bit more. Um, from 2009 to 2013, parking rates in Chicago increased by as much as 8 Hundred percent, and now, like you just heard, two thousand eight was when they sold off these rights to Morgan Stanley. Two thousand nine rolled around, and they just started Ooh, increasing prices. Yeah, eight yeah. times higher. I keep Christ. Right. Yeah, so it started out at a lower part at two thousand nine, but by twenty thirteen, it was eight hundred percent more. The these uh, parking rates, and so. That doesn't even uh that's a lot more than inflation. Let's just put it that, <laughs> that way. But um while working people in Chicago are paying more for parking, the Wall Street and foreign investors that own the parking meters are making enormous profits. Morgan Stanley and its investors will likely collect 11 billion dollars from Chicago as part of this deal, all on the backs of the residents. Even as Chicago runs yearly budget deficits over a hundred million dollars, they have been forced to pay Morgan Stanley thirty-one million dollars to cover their lost revenue every time streets are closed in the city. Because of this public-private partnership, not only are Chicagoans paying more to get work or to get to work, but pat taxpayers are on the book for a bad deal that Wall Street will profit off of for decades. So not only are they they basically taking every uh you know every dollar from these tolls for themselves this uh, Morgan Stanley company but they, whenever it's riskless as well. Yeah. It's it's completely risk free because if a street closes they get they get reimbursed. Yeah, exactly. Sure. And that's the and, same thing that we see out of like the private uh, uh, prison industry too. You know, like they actually uh, make it so that the government has to fill at least like like ninety percent of their uh, cells. 
Otherwise, yeah. the the government actually has to pay for every single empty cell. Yeah. And those are the times uh, the the kinds of things that are in place. And you wonder why we just lock up everyone. There, there's a very obvious correlation there, right? Right. Mm-hmm. But um, unsurprisingly, um, un- what I noticed about this as well is um, it seems to be just one company. So even the right should be against this because it's only one company. See, it's a monopoly. Yeah. It's a government-imposed monopoly. Yeah. Uh, there's no competition there that would, in theory, drive down prices. No. Um, it's just it's just one company is holding all the cards. Yeah. So even the right should be against this. It's just corporatist. Pretty much. You were going to say something, Jordan? I'm sorry. We that's good. Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, that's a great example. What you just read there is a great example of what happens when the government privatizes um, programs and, and um, certain procedures. And uh, Oh, but there's you know, so much more, Jordan. You don't even know. <laughs> I can only imagine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's 10 on this list, but I think we want to get through like two or three of them. Yeah, a couple of them. Uh, the second one here, though, is from Indiana. It's called Indiana Toll Road. Um, in 2006, Indiana signed a 75-year lease for a 175-mile highway for $3.8 billion with investors from Spain and Australia. That company went bankrupt in 2014, partly because its risky uh, financial deals left investors debt-ridden. That lease was then sold to Australian ve- investors after the original investors were bankrupt in 2014. While the debt held by this project increased by $2 billion before the bankruptcy, the Australian parent company is doing extraordinarily well. They reported record profits for the last fiscal year, and their CEO is among the highest paid in Australia. This month, EasyPass drivers on the toll road saw their rates double when the state and when a state rebate program from the privatization deal expired since the road was privatized in 20, 2006 all drivers of two axle vehicles have seen the maximum toll rise from $4.65 to $9.70 <sighs> and yeah it, it just finishes off with today the toll road is deteriorating then the travelers often wait in long lines at the toll plazas and use rest stops that are unsanitary. Yeah, so the service is shit and you don't have to pay twice as much for it. Yeah. Great. Yep. That's a great deal. The idea was <sighs> that they were supposed to uh, repair this road and everything and, and, yeah, and maintain it, it maintain right? It. And yet the road itself is deteriorating. The lines for the toll plazas are extremely long because – I, I mean, I don't know if you've uh, got the same thing over there in uh, the UK. We have some toll roads here, and oftentimes, in, in some instances of toll roads, there's, like, one human worker there, and a few other, like, uh, easy pass lanes, and then um, maybe a, like, an automated thing where you throw change at a machine, and it'll uh, let you go. So, like... But they have like like ten different uh lanes you can go through, but they have like three open at any given time. It seems like <laughs> so I mean it's uh, interesting how that all works, but um it's like a shop yeah and and this company seems to be doing that in this instance in this uh one uh road the the they're not uh, expanding the amount of people at these toll plazas to make the uh, the traffic go smoother. They're not even like cleaning the bathrooms in the rest stops in the place because and they're not maintaining the road itself, which is quite important. Yeah, kind of important, <sighs> kind of. So yeah, you get calls back. All in all, taxes, yeah, like all in all, this f- this seventy five year lease for this company to to uh, collect the tolls is doing nothing for the people. Literally nothing. And as you noted, what the CEO of this company is one of the highest paid in Australia. And they've recorded record profits. Yeah. So. And uh, what happened to uh, American jobs? You know, why is oh, yeah, this overseas? Australia. You know, it's, it's owned by Australians. What's that all about? It's weird. Yeah. Who needs government oversight? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Mm. Let people do what they want, you know? I mean, like, Australians. 
<laughs> I mean, like the one thing, the one thing with business is if there's no competition whatsoever, because they have a 75 year lease, there's absolutely no um, incentive for them to actually please the please, please the public in any way. Yeah. Yeah. But unfortunately, like um, it's all about I maximizing guess, profit. Yeah, right. Except, um, you know, uh, business and, and, and corporate corporization excuse me, is, is so um, is so dark that the only incentive for them to actually it seems to me their only incentive for them to actually um, uh, listen to the public in um, in offer services that the public uh, have actually asked for uh, is when there is competition. Because then it, you know, it, it kind of encourages them to be, uh, to offer something that maybe the yeah. other competitor doesn't for the public. So yeah, like that's the thing with capitalism. If there's no competition, it falls heavily or like solely on profit. That's the only motive. Whereas mm -hmm. when there is uh, competition, yeah. then you have to compete for uh, your profit, and that in itself is the like the wet dream of uh capitalist uh types is that is how the market uh polices itself in in some ways you know where yeah, when yeah <laughs> very serious air quotes but um that's how it's supposed to work and yet at every chance we get with a lot of these things we're destroying uh these things by putting something that honestly can't be put up to uh competition you can't put competition on a on, on a road on a toll road how how would that possibly work will you have like certain lanes different companies that just doesn't make any sense that would be convoluted and ridiculous it's almost as if you can't privatize this because it makes no sense but yeah that's just much like a lot of other things you get natural monopoly stuff on if there's one bridge out of town privatizing it means there's only the one bridge and it's a monopoly everyone yeah. has to use it um, so if, if it's a toll, it's essentially a tax. You've just got to pay it. There's no option. Yeah. And I would rather have the government in control of that just because then us small people actually have a say in what a government does. Yeah. Because we actually vote in all that. You know, you remember all that? Whereas a company, you know, do you the have any... For all its faults, a public service's job is to serve the public. Yeah. Not to generate profit, and they're very different things, and, and those two goals manifest themselves in very um, clear ways when you actually look at how the service is built. Do you have any uh, influence on what uh, Google does? Do you think? No. You know, do do we have any say in what they do, or I don't know, Uber? Do we have any say in what Uber does? No, because they're a private corporation. What they care about is profit motive, and in we just don't have the kind of like a uh, you know wet dream amount of like a uh, i don't know <laughs> like people out there willing to um make these uh, companies uh, compete for for their uh their business and all that i don't know it's just it's it's frustrating can, i don't know can, can we all just agree that anything that was ever once um considered public works should not be privatized and <laughs> yeah. like like uh, what 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 is what's the business motive for a company owning a street <laughs> yeah. or like it, it's like something like that just doesn't it just doesn't connect and it and, and just goes back to what you guys said which is everything can't be privatized just there's just some things yeah. that that the public should actually be in control of the public i.e the government and you know yeah. I mean, because, you know, they're supposed yeah. to be representing the them. public via the government. Yeah, exactly. I mean, usually yeah. what happens, though, I think in these situations is, well, we need to fix these roads and we don't have any money in the budget to do it. So we need to find some quick fix to actually fix the bridge, let's say. And so a lot of what people a lot of what these uh, these government uh, agencies have done over the years in these uh, cases is, well, this uh, private company over here is offering to uh, to pay uh, the to pay the money to fix the bridge, but they they want to be able to uh, put a toll booth yeah, on it. Yeah, it's a bit of a Faustian bargain. Yeah. Um, and you did touch into something I wanted to move on to as well. the The big problem here, the root of all this problem, seems to me to be lack of funds. 
a lot of these companies, these um, facilities have been privatized to raise money to fix them yeah. because there isn't the money there. Uh, in this Fortune article, uh, how bad US infrastructure has become, they lay out um, how much funding we've got and how much funding is needed to um, fix everything. Oh, yeah, so for roads, for really yeah, for roads, for example, they say they need two trillion dollars to fix everything. How much do you think is funded? It's a little less than one trillion dollars, so like less than half. Yeah. For electricity, uh, nine hundred and thirty-four million. Um, That's what they need. Yeah. And they're how much about they've got is eight hundred ish. Yeah, around there, I'd say. Mm-hmm. For schools, it's uh, eight seventy million. About half of that's actually funded. Airports aren't so bad. Um, One hundred fifty-seven million, um, and ninety percent of it's funded. Same with rail. Ninety percent is funded. One hundred fifty-four million needed um, for water and wastewater treating. So um, that's drinking water and treatment of water. Uh, they need one hundred fifty million. How much do you think they've got? Actually, one hundred fifty billion, with a B. Billion. Yes, billion. You know. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. I just wanted to make that clear. Yeah, it's, it says million up there. Um, Sad. Billion. Uh, how much do you think oh, they've wow. got? Yeah, they, they totally fucked that up. <laughs> yeah, that's what I say. On the electricity one, it says million, but I just realized it's tr- it's billion yeah. because that's trillion. Yeah. Um, yeah. But they've got 150 billion. How much do you think they've got to do it? They need 150 billion. Sorry. Go on. Any guesses, Jordan? I don't think you've read this one, have you? I have it in front of me, so I can't really yeah. comment. <laughs> yeah, you're cheating. I'm cheating <laughs> so bad. Do you oh, have a guess, Jordan? Uh, Any? Hmm. Out of $150 billion, how much do you think? Out of $150 billion, how much do I think? That we have for it, that it's funded right now. That is actually funded right now. $150 billion. I'm going to say, because <laughs> I know what we're working with here, I'm going to say $50 billion. You're yeah, actually, actually on the money. Yeah, much right there. Yeah, yeah it's about <laughs> exactly. 50 billion. <laughs> right about there. For parks, for parks and recreation, it's 141 billion, 114 billion, and they've only got like 10 percent of it. Levies and dams is a really interesting one as well because they want about 125 billion between them. They've only got maybe 20, and that's not really important because, um, as Chris was talking about earlier with Katrina. Um, if you don't fund levees and dams, you get floods. And floods are really expensive mm-hmm. to fix. So what happened over here last year is um, the Tories cut the counter funding, um, the, the funding for counter flooding, like counter flood works, you know, dredging streams and building levees, like so all that stuff. Then, of course, it flooded. And it cost about 10 times more to fix all the flood damage than it would have been to just build some levees. If it keeps on raining, levees going away. Anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's the thing with a lot of these. They cost more to not fix than they do to fix. Yeah. But right. try convincing a right winger of that. <laughs> yeah, they're they're kind of important. <laughs> um, there was a, a video that I, I I don't remember who linked it in the uh, in our super secret Discord channel. Um, but uh there was a business insider video on YouTube um that uh went into a little bit about a levy in in California um on this topic of infrastructure the the video itself was all about uh how our infrastructure is crumbling which is what every single outlet is saying about our infrastructure you know um what they went into though is like there was this one levy that if it were to um to fail um it could potentially have thousands of casualties millions and millions of dollars maybe billions of dollars worth of damage and it would be horrendous for i believe it's the uh, the Los Angeles Valley area so if that levy ever fails so which to fund it <laughs> yeah and like we said, the, the, the funding's just not there. They want $80 billion for levies, and it looks like they don't even have $10 billion for the levies. Yeah, you know? and so for, for a local council trying to fix their infrastructure, sometimes these public-private partnerships, they're forced into them by the lack of money. Um, yeah. So it is a national-level problem. It's, um, 
that carries down into the local. Hmm. Who is it that's usually trying to cut funding for for uh, government programs? Mm. Oh. Tories. <laughs> well, in the UK, yes. Yeah. But uh, in the United <laughs> States, though, who do you who who's the who's the people that are always trying to talk about uh, fiscal responsibility and, uh, yes. and cutting? Uh, Cutting spending from the federal government and the all these thing, things. Fiscal responsibility means... Is it the Green um, Party? It might be the Green Party. It could be the Greens. Uh, no, I actually, no, it's not. <laughs> I, I remember now. Yeah. It's not them. It's the Republicans. Yeah. Shocker among shockers. Thing is, fiscal responsibility means efficient spending. It means spending on things that are worth it. This is worth it. This is definitely worth it. Yeah. Well, we, we, <laughs> when it comes to natural disasters, we have this... this uh, we feel that we're ex- an exception. And I, and I think that goes even far beyond po- uh, politics to a certain degree, where it's just like, and that thing's never going to happen to us. You know, it's never going to happen to me. So you don't necessarily... Yeah, despite it happening every bloody year. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. To so. someone, you know, but but it didn't happen to me, so it's not going to happen to me. Right? <laughs> like, um, slightly off topic, but um, the original design of Houston... Has the um? Do you know the the big roads? They're not. I'd, I'd call them highways, but they're not high. They're low. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. they're they're still highways. I think. Okay, are they still highways? They don't have they're to be high up in the air or anything okay. to be highway. <laughs> I just wonder. I thought highways maybe that means raised. I don't know. Do I? We call them motorways. <laughs> um, sad UK. We call them. We sad. call them the motorway because it's the way on which you get motors. But they're highways here. <laughs> so, yeah. Highways. They don't have to okay. Be high up in the but air they're everything, sunk into the ground. And of course they do that, so the sound um, will bounce up into the air rather than going around yeah. surrounding. But it's designed such that those highways will funnel water away from the city in a flood, which is a great thing, and it helps out a lot in the recent hurricane. Yeah. The thing is, Houston's been very loose with its city planning um, regulations, mm. and that hindered some of the... Um, counter flood defenses. This um, effect where you try to channel water away from the city was hindered by some of the very lax city buildings. Essentially, you could plonk a building anywhere. And of course, if you plonk it in the middle of a path where the flood waters would go, that's going to disrupt the water and going to trap water in the city where you don't want it. <sighs> so the hurricane damage was actually a lot worse because of a lax um, regulation in construction. Which is off topic, but I thought it was interesting. Mm, interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. Mm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. It's, <laughs> Regulation it's is good. People. What's that? Regulation is good sometimes. <laughs> yeah, usually. But uh, I don't know. If, did you guys want to hear more of those uh, those amazing stories about uh, how these uh, pu- public-private partnerships are succeeding really, really uh, big league? Let's hear another one. Let's hear one more. Oh, here we go. Bayonne, New Jersey. Water deal. In 2012, Bayonne, New Jersey leased its municipal system to a multinational corporation and private equity firm in exchange for an upfront payment of $150 million. So we're not even in the billions anymore. New Jersey's like, yeah, you want to you want to buy it? Just give us a couple million. We don't we don't care. (sighs) But uh, anyway, um, for the residents of Bayonne, this deal has come with a significant cost. Water rates have skyrocketed nearly 28% since the system was leased to private interests. This was like, that was back in 20, 2012. Let's see where, when was this, uh, piece written 2017. So a few late years later. So but yeah, the the uh, the rates have uh, increased for people. This is after the city told residents that negotiating the deal, or when negotiating the deal, that rates would stay frozen for four years. Apparently, they haven't, or they so did. they didn't. Nope. Bayonne's residents are not able to afford these high rate increases, and the amount of government liens against properties increased from two hundred in twenty twelve. To 465 in 2015. People should not be at risk of losing their homes because a private company's profits were more important than the needs of the consumers. So can you guys actually do that? Because over here, as far as I know, you can't kick someone out of the house because they 
run out, they can't pay the water. In fact, it's yeah, illegal maybe. to um, oh. put someone's water off too. Yeah, no, you know what? Because it goes into um, essentially. Um, so, as working in a law office, uh, <laughs> uh, in doing the more clerical side of things, data entry, I, I noticed that um, some of the letters that we do send to these borrowers have to do with them not being able to pay for um, pay for things such as insurance and. Um, so of course, there's insurance and taxes, except then there's back payments for things that uh, that the city winds up paying for, like their water and stuff uh, that they can be at risk. Uh, their their homes can be at risk uh, in the long run if they let that accumulate. Yeah, so if, mm, especially if there's like there's, a stipulation in the mortgage itself that like if you are uh, doing X, Y, or Z or not doing X, Y, or Z, we can foreclose on you pretty much kind of uh, language. Mm. There's certain things you can't take off a person and, and water is one of them for us. You can never cut a person's water off no matter how much in debt they are. Yeah. I I, I don't know. There might have been a, a problem in some areas mm. from what I remember. I don't know. Maybe it's a state thing. I don't know. I will say um, um, there is that one town that we uh, we have been trying to look into it's just hard because the area itself is really, really uh, low income, so it's it's difficult to find so avenues to get into there, like to to talk to anyone. But um, there's a city in uh, Texas outside of uh, Dallas that we've been wanting to look into, um, that hasn't have had any water at all for mm. for decades and decades like i think it was over 30 years they didn't have any kind of running water and the most ironic and messed up part about it is the water treatment plant for dallas the the city of dallas is like you can see the plant from this this town well yeah that's and they don't have running water in the town they can't just like set up, set up a, a a well or something. I mean, that's what some people were uh, working with. I think um, in the the one article that I had on that, um, there was a guy. He was buying well water from one of his uh, his neighbors, but like the guy offered like the the reporter that came up there to drink from it, and the reporter was like, mm, no, <laughs> because it was like. It yeah. it it was worrying to him because it was looking like kind of dirty stick, and I mean nasty. Two miles, water. two or three miles. They could just stick a pipe over land for that. They don't even need to bury it, really. They could do a million things, but they the the problem is they didn't for over thirty years because it's profit, I guess. Yeah, exactly. There's and a, it, they just gets, ignored them, and it gets better. There's I can't remember where it was. Do you remember where the town was that? Um, their water is full of lead to the point where they can't use Flint. it for anything. You can't wash with it. I don't Flint? think it was Flint, it was the one. There's loads of There's towns probably a few, this. but Flint, Michigan was having a, a lead problem. But they, um, the water's so full of lead that you can't use it for anything. I can't cook with it, can't wash with it, can't, um, um, do anything with it, can't drink it. Yeah, that's the sad part of America. You know, um, it happens yes. so often that we, we, it's just yeah. white noise at a, after a point, you so know? So they all have to buy bottled water and bring in bottled water. Yeah. And the water company are still charging them <laughs> for the water bills. Of course. So they're having to pay loads of money for bottle water and then having to pay a water bill on top of it for water they can't use. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> oh, what? Can we just make it a law that if, if your water isn't up to quality, then you don't have to pay? It would be nice, but obviously that would cut into profits and therefore never happen, unfortunately. Right. Well, if you want the profits, then have a decent water service. I mean... Yeah, but that would be like work, man. <laughs> like, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> it makes sense. That's the problem. It makes too much sense <laughs> for mm -hmm. for some of these assholes. Yeah. <sighs> I think like, you know, hearing all these um, examples of, you know, privatization, it just reminds reminds me of how just uh damage or just like how prevalent uh I guess uh, this this revolving door is in terms of uh, government and um, in the private sector, whereas like they do favors in hopes that there will be some type of um, monetary gain for them 
in the end because they a lot of these people they don't necessarily like once they retire out of you know um out of their government positions the next step is usually lobbying or you know or work, working for some private mm-hmm. organization of course so it's what's called the revolving door where a lot of these yeah. people go from government into these cushy little positions with these companies and oftentimes they go back into government eventually too yeah so they'll be a corporate executive and then they'll go into government into politics get elected pass laws deregulate tax cuts all this stuff and then go back into the company and get paid crap tons of money yeah, it's weird it's almost mm-hmm. as if that's like corruption man it's almost like it's corruption it's almost like it's like how Donald Trump is like a smart person in a, in, a, in a way, you know? It's it's almost like that. Almost like that. But anyway. <laughs> uh but yeah, I mean infrastructure is important, guys. Uh Bernie Sanders and the the Democrats have in the past tried to um or are even now trying to push for uh for infrastructure spending. And Trump himself has been saying that, yeah, we want to spend more on uh, infrastructure. But well, he was, and now he's just talking about privatizing it all. Yeah, but that's the thing. They, this is the 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 way that that public private uh, thing works. You know, the government doesn't pay for most of it. They just get corporations to pay for the repairs, and then they give the the toll money or the the parking meter money to these corporations that footed the bill. And so these companies make out like bandits. Like, how do you give a company a 75 year lease on, on uh, all of the, uh, the, the toll roads or all of the parking meters in a city that just seems ridiculous. And on top of that, they can raise the rates of those tolls. How can you give that much power? Notably, to them? they're making eleven times more money than um, it costs them, but the the costs are eight times higher. Yeah. So they could have not raised the cost and still made profit. So that's they're actually just doing it to maximize profit, not just to to make yeah. it even. Yeah. But um, going back to Trump's infrastructure plan, though, that is exactly what he wants to do. Though is he like there's here's a clip or a. Uh, Something from Bernie Sanders here. Um, I have a piece here from Politico. Uh, the the headline is Sanders rips Trump infrastructure plan as corporate welfare. It starts by uh, saying Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders blasted President elect Donald Trump's proposed infrastructure plan on Monday, calling it a scam and corporate welfare. Quote, Trump's plan to repair our infrastructure is a scam that gives massive tax breaks to large companies and billionaires, Sanders wrote on Twitter, embedding a link to an article he published on Medium.com, which is the other uh, article that we've been uh, happening to uh, reference. Uh, Quote, uh, Trump would allow corporations that have stashed their profits overseas to pay just a fraction of what the companies owe in federal taxes. So this is a tax holiday thing. This is something that um, has been going on for years now. Um, I know uh, George W. Bush did this a few times where what they do is the the top tax rate for these companies could be in the the twenty eight percent range or something like that, and so the government will give them what's called a tax holiday and let them bring back any profits that they made overseas to America and pay like half a percent or one yeah. percent or something stupid in in taxes on that money instead of that twenty eight percent that they should have been paying. And so apparently Trump is putting some of that into the infrastructure bill, according to Bernie here. Yeah. And like, so a byproduct of of increased uh, spending in infrastructure is job creation. And, and that's why it's, you know, it was such, it's it's such a infrastructure is popular in terms of, you know, uh, in terms of its funding, like in the, well, specifically increasing its funding because it'll, it has, a, it will stimulate, uh, stimulate job growth. And so 
privatizing that just messes up with that formula. And uh, and I and I believe that's why you know whenever you hear someone like Bernie talk about infrastructure spending, and you'll hear Democrats talk about it, even Republicans, uh, they'll they'll bring up how um, this has the potential to really um, you know just create much needed jobs and uh and so like you know there, there's absolutely no really good reason <laughs> for privatization i mean and, and, and i'm sure the, the fallout will be unpopular period and republicans that ask well what do you want to do raise taxes yeah yeah raise taxes a little bit and then we'd have to pay ten dollars every time i want to cross a bridge um it's pretty straightforward for me there are some yeah. things it's worth raising taxes for. Not all tax raises are a bad thing, and some of them save you money. Yeah. And there's a, a little quote here at the end of this uh, political thing from a uh, a Ron Klain, who is a, a Hillary Clinton advisor. Um, he also was arguing that uh, the Democrats shouldn't uh, back the plan. He says, quote, I've got a simple message for Democrats who are embracing uh, President-elect Donald Trump's infrastructure plan. Don't do it. It's a trap. Backing Trump's plan is a mistake in policy and political judgment, and they will regret, as did their Democratic predecessors who voted for Ronald Reagan's tax cuts in 81 and George W. Bush's cuts in 2001. So, yeah. I just I, I wanted to add that. Sorry, it's worth it. Yeah. Uh, final thing I wanted to add: <clears throat> part of Trump's infrastructure bill, he wants to shorten down the um, approval process for new roads and infrastructure and stuff. Um, he's not been specific about how he wants to do that yet, but I suspect he's going to target the environmental um, approvals and the ethical approvals. So um, before you build anything, you've got to get it approved by environmental panels. So. Yeah. How is this going to affect the environment? He's already shown he doesn't give a damn about yeah. the environment. <laughs> like, so if your new infrastructure is going to fuck up some important wildlife areas or important waterways and things, you can't do it. Yeah. You remember uh, Dakota Access Pipeline uh, when that was a big fight under Obama and mm -hmm. Obama and the Democrats caved eventually? Well, once Donald, Trump, once Donald Trump got into office, he okayed it. So that did happen anyway. Sure did. No matter sure did. what mm -hmm. happened. Like, all of the 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 sacred uh stone uh you know protesters were doing for nothing you know and this is because the republicans took office you know right that's actually a great example because what was going on was the army corps of engineers were doing a review on the environmental impact of the uh pipeline yeah except yeah as soon as trump came in he, he pretty much um, he put it's the like, kibosh don't on care. there. Don't care. Well, he, what he did was he expedited um, the review process, which means that they, they weren't able to, you know, probably do all mm -hmm. of this research and, um, and testing that they needed to do. Thank well, you. the other side of it um, is the ethical approval, which is how does it affect people living in the area? Um, you know, yeah. it, does it increase noise pollution, particularly you know, largely? Does it increase... Um, does the pollution are the pollution levels manageable for people living nearby? Things like that. Yeah. Um, and again, if it's not ethic, seen as ethical, it's not supposed to be built. It's, it probably, probably skipped all that stuff as well. Yeah. Well. So, yeah. With that, guys, I I don't know how much else we can uh, go on about this. We need <laughs> uh, infrastructure spending, and we need it badly. But with Trump's plan. We stand to lose a lot more than we're going to gain. And what we get is a Faustian bargain, just to deal with the devil when we get yeah. screwed. Yeah, essentially, we're going to have more privatized uh, gains and uh, more losses for us because there will maybe more more roads will be told, like more uh, highways that had no tolls beforehand. If these private industries get in there. They'll throw toll booths on that immediately just because they want to make money. And so it's probably never going to get to the point where every single road in your your uh, in your uh, town or your city is a toll road or anything like that. But there's definitely room for them to uh, increase toll uh, roads 
like some of these bigger highways. You know, there's some roads right in Philly, you know, some really big highway roads there that don't have tolls on them at all, except for, I guess, the bridges. But they could start putting tolls into there. And and that's how it's going to creep, you know, and it's just a bad idea, guys. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I don't know if uh, those examples did it for you. But there's there's more of them, too. Those were only three of the ten that uh, Bernie Sanders listed. And I guarantee you there's more than that. But uh, this this stuff matters. And it's one party mostly doing this stuff. And the Democrats haven't been great either. They have been very, very weak on, on most things. Characteristically, the Democrats have been not positively bad but sort of negatively bad they they just don't do anything yeah they're just too weak they they just fold like a a deck of cards you know right away it's it's really pathetic but uh yeah with that guys thank you so much for joining us this week um thanks for joining us to jordan finally eventually uh, eventually (laughs) my god (laughs) but um second egg Oh, I, I, I almost forgot to mention that this isn't just an America problem either. Um, Europe is also having uh, ma- massive problems with uh, spending on infrastructure, too. Like Germany and the rest of Europe are also having some uh, low levels of infrastructure spending. So yeah, nothing quite the problem of the U.S., but yeah, yeah, there's some significant problems with the yeah. Europe as well, yeah. for some reason. So... So we're not in this alone, I guess, I guess is what uh, I can say there. So, but yeah, it's, it's happening more and more and it's, it's this creep of, uh, I would guess capitalism and everything and, and these right wingers that are trying to, uh, push for more privatization of every damn thing, you know, that's really at the heart of it. That's, that's my guess at least, you know? Just like uh, we have all these private industries like resisting uh, uh, making universal health care or universalized, uh, you know, college and stuff like we mentioned. Uh, there's also forces in the United Kingdom that are trying to privatize the NHS. So this this just seems to be happening across the uh, the spectrum here and across all these countries. Mm-hmm. So. We have to be vigilant. We have to uh, stand up, guys, and mm. and get involved and and make sure that these things don't happen, and make sure that we also push for a better future, not just a status quo. We we obviously are not in favor of that anymore. I think the uh, the loss of the Democrats in in the most recent uh, presidential election should be a uh, a catalyst for that. We don't mm. want status quo. Left wing politics. Yeah. We want actual answers to these problems. We don't want to just keep things the way that they are because they're not working the way that they are. And the interesting thing about spending on infrastructure is um, once we've got it, we've got it. So if you build a bridge, you've got the bridge. It costs a little bit to maintain it, but after that, it's good. Uh, so eventually, spending on they this do uh, deteriorate enough yeah, to be you got rebuilt. To them a bit. Yeah. Like a. Uh, there was a uh, Greenfield, I think it was, Greenfield Bridge <laughs> yeah, Greenfield in uh, Pittsburgh. Bridge. They had to build a bridge under the bridge to catch bits of the bridge, yeah, catch that was, bits that was, of the bridge falling off. But they rebuilt it now, so that's yeah. good. That was an amazing story, yeah. But anyway, uh, I think we're done for tonight. Yeah, I guess we should uh, wrap it up like I was been, I've was i been trying to, I guess. But <laughs> yeah. that's I'm okay. Done. I'm just getting started. Whatever, well, go on Jordan. Then, Jordan. You just, oh. uh, you know, <laughs> we don't care, Jordan. You you showed up late, so you don't, yeah, you don't matter what? anymore. Oh, <laughs> but uh anyway with that guys um thank you again for joining us uh you can email us at the evolution of now at gmail.com and uh send us your fan mail your uh your hate mail your uh comments criticisms uh if you love us you hate us hate do man. it you know send us something man just just you know send us something please please we're lonely lonely <laughs> But also we have a, a, a Discord. Yeah, pretty much. 
much. But um, we also have a Discord that you can join. We actually have a, f- a few people in there now. Oh, man, we got two people in there besides me, Jordan, and, and Michael. But I, we, we can build this thing. You know, like, if you guys want to uh, talk with us and uh, and the other people that are listening to this podcast, definitely join in there. I am usually in there, and uh, Mike is often in there, too. Jordan, look, never in there. Look, I'm working my way in there, but, you know, honestly, like, guys... <laughs> Look, we don't need you. I mean, if you want to, I mean, you can come, but I mean, we're cool. But I'm don't listen to them. Jordan. I'm don't listen to them. Jordan. Like people, that's supposed to work. Do not listen to Jordan because he is a a terrible, sad little baby like man who has no stamina. He doesn't have the stamina for this. Uh, um, can we but, close uh, this off before I go insane? <laughs> We also have a Facebook at facebook.com slash the evolution of now. Uh, you can uh, potentially, uh, you know, if you want to donate to the show, you can through our Patreon at patreon.com slash the evolution of now. And uh, we will see you next week. And thank you guys for uh, showing up. Fuck you, Donald Trump. Fuck you, uh, Paul Ryan. Fuck you, Mitch I- McConnell. Fuck you, Republicans. I have a word. Please rate us five stars on whatever podcast oh yeah i guess you can do that i I, I, I mean that'd be cool i don't know anything about that yeah that might help us uh actually get uh seen more if you guys can give us some uh some some thumbs up or star things whatever it is that you uh that they do over there in the uh the itunes and podcasting uh markets oh (laughs) jeez anyway good night guys (laughs) good night Yeah, you just would have cut me off. Are we? We're still recording. (laughs) 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 